Okay, so we got our stage one. We know where our financial stage is. And if you don't know exactly where you are right now, that's okay. The point of this workshop is to give you the foundation fundamental principles so that you can go out and succeed in real estate investing. So if we have to hash that out later, no problems. So we have an idea of where we're at now and we're looking to take that and choose an investment strategy that fits where we are financially. Like we said again, if I have a cool mill, I'm not buying a $200,000 house. And if I save $250 a month, I'm not buying a 24 unit apartment complex. So let's dive into some real estate investing strategies that work to where we are financially. So if you're in stage number one or two or identify with those stages there, um, these are a couple things that you can do. I apologize in advance, some of these slides are wordy, but when you guys get the slides at the end, um, I want you to have enough information that you can read through them, but I'll paraphrase what you need to know. First thing you can do, you can ask for a raise. Who here works at a job, a nine to five or some sort of for another employer? I would say the majority of us work for another employer. Okay, we get it mortgage agents, we get it. You guys work for yourselves, you guys are, I'm joking. All right, but most of us, we work for an employer. I work for one too. Have you guys ever taken the time and going to ask for a raise? Simply go up to whether it's your boss, supervisor, manager, and ask for your raise. There is a pandemic going on in the labor market right now. People cannot find enough uh, good employees. And if you guys are here, you guys are already high achievers. There's no reason why you can't either take that to your manager and boss and say, hey, these are my skills. I'd like to be compensated a little bit more. And if that doesn't work, maybe it's uh, time for you to go look for where your skills are worth more elsewhere. Now again, this doesn't work for everyone, but this is a great idea for people here because right now you don't have the money to invest. You're looking to add more capital to your savings so that you can invest that into some more real estate. The next thing you can do is manage a renovation project. Myself, I have a lot of renovation projects under the go. Sometimes I have two or three at the same time. Now, I don't usually invest close to home, so maybe it's not uh, the best things for us here, but there's a ton of investors who invest in your local market. I'd advise you to reach out to them, say, hey, listen, I'm looking to get involved into real estate. One, they're probably gonna pay you a little bit to uh, work on their renovation project, and two, you're gonna learn so much because you're gonna be there firsthand. I'll tell you first off, I did not know how to replace any flooring, but I took one Sunday with someone who was doing a renovation project and I learned about uh, you know, underlay, I learned about like laminate versus LVP flooring. I, I didn't know that you, you weren't supposed to like paint over the baseboard. Like I thought you just put it and you just go like this with the paint. I didn't know that. There's like other steps that you have to go through and like, you know, that's free learning and they were actually paying me to do it. And that's a great way that you can one, learn as well as gain some extra money in the real estate industry. Next thing, you can become a wholesaler. Now I've dabbled a little bit in wholesaling, but I'll break this down for you in a little bit here. So let's use it uh, like this. So I'll get you to hold this and you're gonna get it in a second here. Sorry, it was uh, Cameron? Perfect, okay. So Kevin has a house. Kevin, you know, maybe he's, uh, he's been there for uh, 25 years and he's like, listen, I gotta go. I I'm going to live in Florida because he's at financial stage number five. So I'm talking with Kevin, I'm chatting up, say, hey man, listen, I wanna buy your house for let's say $100,000. And Kevin agrees, Kevin's like, great price, get price. So I take that and we sign a contract together. So now Kevin and I have a contract. This is the contract for the house. Kevin still has the keys, okay? But this is the contract. Now, Cameron's a real estate investor and he wants to get involved in real estate. So me and Cameron are chatting. I'm like, hey, listen, I got this contract for a house. It's gonna be $110,000. Does that work for you? Cameron's super excited. He's got a house at a discount and he didn't have to do all the work to find it. So what I do is I sell him this contract. So that's for you. So let's do the math nice and quick because I kept it easy so we could all follow. I bought it, I got the property under contract for 100 and I wholesaled it to Cameron for 110. So now I stand in the middle with $10,000 as a spread. And you do that one, two, three, four times a year, before you know it, you have a lot of capital stacked up that you can start investing into some more buy and hold real estate. Does that all make sense for you guys? Perfect, give me a hands up if that makes sense. Excellent, love it, love it, love it. Next thing we can do, rental or Airbnb arbitrage. My dad over there, we are trying to get into this, um, but it's a little bit difficult uh, sometimes, but it's an amazing strategy to get involved into real estate with no money. Like we're trying to build money, we got none of this is the best way. How rental arbitrage works is, let's say, Karim, my, my friend back there, Karim, he's got a property, a nice two bedroom condo, it's nice. Redone, renovated, it's got a waterfall shower, ooh. Um, and he's doing that and he wants to rent it out, but he doesn't want to go through landlord tenant. He doesn't want to deal with the issue. So I walk up to him, all polished. I come up to my guy, say, Hey, I'd like to rent your property and put it on. Corinne, the landlord, he's very happy because he's like, Oh my gosh, I got a professional coming in to, you know, rent my property. They're going to pay me rent. I'm not going to have to deal with any issues. And I'm happy because I'm going to put it on Airbnb or another short term rental site. And I'm going to make more than I made in rent. So Krim, how much you want, uh, you want to rent that two bedroom condo for? Uh, like 
three, four Gs a month. Okay, let's say he wants three Gs. He wants three thousand. So I take it, I get that rental contract for three thousand. So my only expense is to pay Karim his three thousand dollars a month. I put it on Airbnb. I do it. Let's say we got, you know, out of thirty days, we rent it twenty days, and I make four thousand dollars a month off my Airbnb arbitrage. Karim gets three. I get paid four. What's the difference, guys? If we can do the quick math, who got the quick math? A thousand. Woo! A thousand. That's one thousand dollars a month. That's twelve thousand dollars a year. Imagine you do that twice. Two different properties. That's twenty-four k in a year, right? That is something crazy that you can do. And before you know it, you're now rolling that into more uh, rental real estate there. Now again, these are high level strategies. Like again, we could do a whole seminar on just this or just this, but I want you guys to be aware of some of the more inve uh, investing strategies that match for where you are financially. So let's move on to number three. So at number three, like I said, you have a little bit of money now and you're starting to save and understand now that your time is worth more than just going to work. So again, everything from one and two is still in play here, but let's add a couple more to the equation. Uh, let's go with a live in flip. Does anyone know what a live in flip is? couple nods, but that's okay. So a live in flip is where you're going. You're going to find a property real distressed. I'm talking maybe a little bit of water damage. Roof needs to be redone. They had guinea pigs running around all over the floor. It's in rough shape, but it's still livable. So what you're going to do is you're going to put on your big boy, big girl pants, and you're going to step into that property while you're living there. You're going to renovate it and you can do it fast. You can do it slow. But when you do a live in flip, there's a couple benefits. One, you're going to get amazing financing, mortgage brokers, owner financing. Is it better than rental financing? Boom, so if you get uh, owner-occupied financing, that's another plus. Number two, when you sell that property, as long as you've been there for a year and follow all the tax rules, you're gonna get a tax uh, advantage sale. So you're not gonna pay the same tax bill that I would as a rental property, but at the end of the day, we're taking that property, we're adding value, we're taking the connects and you know fixing it up, and we're putting it back on the market, we're gonna sell it for some more money and bring more income into our re uh, real estate business. Another thing you can do is house hacking. Now, I think this is the most powerful strategy and if it was up to me, I would do a whole seminar just on this because I'm so on this strategy. House hacking is a way where you can get yourself into a property and share the rental expense. Uh, let's say you have a two unit property or a duplex. You live in the top level and you rent out the bottom level or vice versa. Or if you're a little bit younger, you can also get like a regular single family home, three bedrooms rent out the two bedrooms to your friends or maybe even the basement to your friend and you can live for free. Think about it. If you have a three bedroom house, um, you have one friend paying 800, you have another friend paying 800, you're getting 1600 bucks in rent, all the boys are living together and you're lowering your, your rent there. This is a way to get into a property and still have it be, um, and still have a way to pay for it without uh, kind of eating into your savings. Now this house hacking strategy can work all across the board, whether you're living in a condo, whether you're looking at a single family home. And I'd really advise you guys to take a look at this, especially if you're in a position where this makes sense for you guys are life wise there. All right, so we've been through one, two, and three. Any questions on that before we go to the big dogs four and five? No, we're all good? Good, everyone's still with me? Give me a couple claps if you're still with me, okay? Good stuff, moving on to number four. All right, so at this point, you're ready to buy some rental real estate. This is where you guys have actually been uh, talking about here. So I wanna go through four nice methods when you're at financial stage number four. So the first method, it's called the Burr method. I'm sure a lot of people who've touched real estate before have heard about it, but I'll break it down for you at a high level. It's Burr is an acronym. It stands for buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. Now, don't get me wrong, we didn't just coin this now. Old school real estate investors, they've been doing this from time. We just are, we think we're cool, we have to put an acronym to it. So what you do is you're gonna find a property, it's distressed, like I said, you know, it needs new flooring, needs new paint, we're gonna buy it, we're gonna renovate it, we're gonna find a nice tenant, we're gonna put the tenant in there, tenant's gonna pay rent, we'll take it back to the bank and say, hey, look at this bank, I got this nice property, I got a good tenant in there, everybody's paying it, I'd like you to put a mortgage on this for me. So the bank looks, they sniff around a little bit, they do a appraisal, so they sniff around the property, they make sure everything's good and say, you know what, Isaiah, that's great. It's a nice property, let's put a mortgage on it. So they're gonna put a new mortgage on that and everything they give you, you take all your money back out and you repeat the process. You go do it again. You go find another property and you do the uh, process again. Now the reason why the Burr method is so powerful is because you can use that same capital again and again and again. Let's say you had $50,000 to buy a property and that's what you did. If you finish the Burr method and you do it properly, you're gonna pull out all 50 or close to it and take that same capital and be able to use it again. Now for these resources, I guys just want you to write this down if you're interested in the Burr method. Look up the Burr book, or what's it called? Yeah, the Burr method by David Green. Burr method by David Green. You can find it on Bigger Pockets. I'll hit you with my affiliate link, I'm joking. Um, 
but that's an amazing book. Like that really gets into the nitty gritty. He even does it on an audio book so you can listen to it in the car. Next is your traditional buy and hold. Now I think this gets a lot of slack. Everyone's like, I gotta be doing something sexy. I gotta be doing a flip. I gotta be doing creative financing. This is the tried and true strategy when it comes to real estate investing. We're gonna buy a property 20% down, 80% loan from an A bank, and we're gonna have that property cash flow. And we're just gonna buy and hold. Real estate makes sense in the long term. Can I say that again? Real estate makes sense in the long term. We're gonna hold this property for five, 10, 15 years. And when we look back on it, the equity that we've made in this property, that's where our wealth is being built. It's not built over the one, $200 that we're gonna make every month. Like no one's retiring on that. But we hold that thing for 10 years. We look back and we're like, ooh, all that equity we've created there, we've created some massive wealth for ourselves and for our family. So don't sleep on the buy and hold because that's one of the tried and true strategies here of real estate investing. Another one here is I like to call buy three, Key, uh, sell two, keep one. And was probably like, what? What does that even look like? Let me break it down for you here. So let's say we have Richard here. So Richard's been a real estate investor for a long time. You guys living in stage five. He's living in stage five. He's got a couple rental properties. He's got three single family homes. I said, hey Richard, man, I, I wanna get involved in real estate investing. How can I do it? You say, uh, you know what? Why don't I sell you all three homes? Now by buying all three homes at the same time, we're gonna get a discount. It's like going to Costco, right? I'm gonna buy three tubes of toothpaste, it's gonna to cost me like the price of buying two. Same thing with the house. So we're gonna get a little bit of a discount because I bought all three. And I know, I'm like, listen, I can't hold all three. I don't have uh, that much capital. So instead of holding all three, we're gonna sell two. Take two of them, sell them on the open market for top dollar. So now we have two that we've probably made a little bit of income on and we have that one that we're gonna hold and we're gonna uh, run that really well and that's gonna be the one that we build wealth. So again, we're gonna buy three at a discount, sell two for top dollar, and keep one and stabilize that as our rental property there. And that's the buy three, sell two, keep one method. <clears throat> Excuse me. And next, we can become a house flipper. Now there's so many different books and resources you can go about house flipping, and I would highly encourage you guys to do some re uh, a lot of research before you get into it. But house flipping, one of the most effective strategies to build income. I call this an active strategy because it's going to be active. You're either going to that property or you're on the phone each and every day working on your flip properties there. And if for those of you who don't know what a fl uh, house flip is, I'll break it down for you. So Justin, my man over here, he's got a property, he found it, it's in real rough shape, he's gonna buy it, um, he's gonna put a lot of work into it, whether it's uh, renovations or he's gonna put a new roof, but he's gonna make that nice, gonna do all the crown molding, make it beautiful. The stuff that you guys see on Realtor that sits there for like two days and then it gets sold. We put that back on the market and we're gonna get our income back from that. And the spread that you make between your buy and your renovation versus your sell, that income is what you're gonna do and that's gonna be uh, fueled into your uh, health there. Here. Pranav, have you had a question? No, actually, I did. if you don't mind, I wanted to add something on here. Please, yes. Um, so out of all these methods, the house flipping actually has the easiest financing and it has like the most creative financing you could do. Like you could get in and get out in the fastest method out of all of these. So if you just wanna get in somewhere and get out, like you don't wanna deal with the headache of a lot of work, paperwork, and just like stressing about equity takeouts, et cetera, that's the fastest one. Awesome. Them. Yes, and that's and he's so right. There's a whole bunch of creative strategies that we talked about. That we, sorry, that we will talk about how you can get into a house flip or a flipping uh, property and get in and get out. Thank you so much for adding that, Pranav. I appreciate that. Um, and we'll go to the last one. So this is financial stage number five. Remember, so Richard, he's been in the uh, you know real estate investor for 25 years, and these are some of the um, these are some of the strategies that I would advise for him or something that we should look forward to. So the first thing is refinancing. You know, we've probably had properties for a couple of years and over those years, tenants pay down or we pay down our mortgage and we start building up equity. But a lot of us kind of, we just sit there and we don't do anything with it. So there's a lot of dead equity sitting there and we're not doing too much with it. So this is the stage where you can go back into that property, refinance it with either a mortgage broker or a, a bank and you can actually pull some of that money back out. The next thing you can do is you can reduce some of your real estate debt. Now you can do that through a refinance or sometimes you can use it by actually paying down your loan. Uh, a lot of the time, if you're at a stage and you're stable with your investment portfolio and you wanna reduce some of the debt on your property, that's a great way to add your income. Think about it, if your mortgage, if you have five properties and your mortgage is $1,000 on each of those, what's five times 1,000? Five, 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 gee, burgers, give me some of that. Who is this guy, look at that. Okay, so at 5,000, so now we start paying that down a little bit. We pay down that mortgage, and now we have five properties at $500. This is a little bit harder. We got five properties, $500 mortgage. How much is our mortgage? Uh, 
20, cheapers, who is this guy? So now we have a whole portfolio worth of mortgages at 2,500. We've just added $2,500 of income and all we did is pay down our mortgage. Now again, this is a really aggressive example that I kind of put out there, but this is a way to reduce your debt and increase your income when you have a lot of properties. Another thing you can do is upgrade your holdings. Now, as you get into real estate investing, you're gonna buy some properties and I'll be honest, you're gonna defer some maintenance. You're gonna look and be like, ah, that roof can go another year. Uh, that toilet's uh, okay as it's literally overflowing. But this is a great time where you wanna upgrade your holdings. Look at what you have and you're like, this property's not performing. Maybe it's time to sell that and get into something else. Maybe this is the time you do the roofs on your properties that you're waiting for. Again, a way, I would rather have properties that perform well and are stable than have a lot of properties that are literally falling apart at the seams. So when you're at this stage, this is a great uh, way to kind of uh, increase the value of your overall holdings. Now, let's say you don't have any rental properties, but somehow you're sitting on a cool mill like Richard over here. Um, you can also involve into passive real estate investing. Now, shameless plug. My company, First Position Real Estate, we're huge on passive investing. I like to joint venture and passive lend with a lot of different investment partners. And this is an amazing way to get involved into real estate if you actually don't want to be the active partner here. Now, this seminar is not for a joint venture partnership there, but I'll leave it at that. If you're looking for ways to get involved into real estate without actually owning the piece of real estate, passive real estate investing is an amazing opportunity. I'd be happy to share that with you guys after or at the break. And finally, you want to reduce all overall consumer debt. So if you have credit cards, line of credit, student debt, get rid of that. I can tell you any mortgage broker, the first thing they look at, they, they got to look at your debt. So whether you have expensive car payments, uh, you know, drowning in student debt, or you have like seven credit cards that are racked up like all the way, this is the time that you want to reduce that overall debt so that you can qualify for more mortgages and uh, kind of decrease your overall spending. That makes sense for everyone there? All right, so now we, we're gonna go back to our worksheet. I think, what are we at, page, what is number three? Where's my smarty pants up here? Number, okay, do you need a pen? You good? We're good, okay, cool. So we're gonna go to number three, and I want you guys to identify two strategies that you're gonna commit to working on after the seminar. And now again, we don't have to pick these strategies forever, but after we've kind of heard them at a high level, I want you to really think about them and identify two that you wanna work on there. We'll give you guys 60 seconds for that, and uh, then we'll get back to it, okay? Go ahead, guys.